Hey everyone, I'm going to introduce a new 3x3 method called rhubar in this video. So before I talk about rhubar and what it is, I need to give some context behind it because this isn't a speed solving method. Instead, it's just more of a solving method that involves a lot of theory and is trying to explore a new frontier of cubing theory. So first of all, let's talk about how methods work in general. Basically, you're trying to reduce the number of states the cube can be in. For example, in this cube, you're doing CFOB, and once you finish F2L, you reduce the number of states to all of the last layer combinations. So then you can do OLL to further funnel it down into PLL cases, 21, plus some pre and post AUFs. So here's a JPerm. Cool. Now, uh, there is a subset of these methods that I find particularly interesting. So they're here, domino reduction, EO first, ZZ with EO line, and RU. And let's take Rue for example. The premise is not only to reduce the number of states the cube can be in, but to reduce the number of ways that you can turn the cube physically. So for example, with Rue, you reduce the MU, so uh, you can't do anything else other than MU moves uh, if you're doing like the pure version of Rue. So here we can do like EO and then like this. So you've basically turned the cube into a mini puzzle that you only have M and U moves. And that's what makes these solving methods generally interesting to me. Now, that's not the only way to reduce the number of ways left to solve the cube. There is another new world of methods that was recently pioneered by Chung Yen Wu, which is called bandaged reduction. So the premise of these methods is to reduce the cube into this kind of mini puzzle, where instead of limiting the number, like the limiting the different ways that you can turn the cube, you just turn it into a puzzle that blocks you from turning sometimes. For example, here, you can't do like R moves because this big block is bandaged together. That means these pieces are fused together. So, um, but these methods, what they do is reduce the cube more and more and just keep on gluing pieces together until there's only one way left to solve the cube where you just keep on turning and then the cube will solve itself. It's really magical. And these, these methods are amazing. So what I kind of realized is that uh, there's actually kind of an overlap between these two different families of methods, like something like this. If we made this like a Venn diagram, turns out that ZZ with Eoline and Ru are also bandaged reduction methods, sort of. So basically like with, let's take uh, ZZ Eoline in particular, uh, if you do EO and then like the line, what you notice is that if you just solve the cube with only R, U, and L moves, which is not how you do it in practice, by the way, but like you can do that, you're basically like uh, bandaging this strip of pieces right here. So that is a bandaged puzzle. But unlike this one over here, which uh, belongs to the RUP method, uh, you're allowed to turn the cube anytime. So there are actually, in this kind of intersection between the two family of methods, there are ways to equivalently define the turning restriction, like limiting the number of ways you can turn the cube by both a bandage, so like a, a line that's taped together here, and a set of moves, so R, U, and L moves. Now, bandaged cubes are really interesting because the majority of bandages that exist out there will block your turns sometimes. So taking this example earlier, like here you can't do R moves, but now you can. And then now you can't do U moves and, and stuff like that. And this is what makes these bandage cubes so frustratingly difficult. You keep on running into these walls. And all of your favorite techniques from 3x3 and regular twisty puzzles just completely stop working. That's because stuff like algorithms are now dependent on whether you are allowed to turn those sequence of moves based on where the blocks are. So like sometimes like an owl that starts with an R, you can't do it here, but you can do it there. But what about the next move and so on? So these puzzles, despite having a way smaller set of states is much more difficult now than its unbandaged counterpart. Uh, but there is an irresistible beauty about these methods, REP and PBW, where you keep on progressively bandaging the cube more and more and more. You just 
fuse more and more pieces together until there's only one way left to turn. And if you just keep on turning, the cube will automatically solve itself as it cycles through all of the remaining cases left. So that's what's really beautiful. So what I want to know is if we can capture a lot of this beauty and put it into like a method that has more of this stuff here, that has more moveset reduction, where you have certain bandages that don't have blocking moves, so you can turn freely and still use some group-based uh, stuff like uh, commutators and algorithms and stuff like that. Okay, time to actually talk about the rhubar method. So the first step of rhubar is CP line. You solve corner permutation and then you solve this line here such that the cube is reduced to R, U, M, and E. So you can just do R, U, M, and E moves to solve the rest of the cube. And this corresponds exactly with this bandage right here. So if you just glue these three pieces together. Step two is expanding that original line into a Rue style first block that restricts the turning to R, U, and M moves. Step three is EO strike, where you solve the EO or edge orientation of the cube while also expanding the Rue first block with a stripe of pieces at the bottom to form a bigger block. Now you can only do R and U moves. Step four is CDO belt, where you solve the CO or corner orientation of the cube while also solving this belt here, which reduces the cube into R2U. Step five is five bars, where you make these five parallel bars such that the cube is reduced to R2U2. And finally, no matter what you do in the R2U2 moveset, the cube's gonna solve itself every single time. So let me show you. It should do like R2, U2, R2, U2. Eventually, it will solve itself magically. All of the steps in Rhubar follow the same constraints as RUP and PPW, where whenever you intentionally create a block, it gets instantly fused and bandaged together and you're never allowed to separate them ever again. And so that means that you can never break any progress that you've made in the past, not even temporarily. And methods that kind of respect this principle are called non-breaking methods, and they're very rare. Um, so the first half of the method I stole from the Briggs method because it's a nice way of reducing to RU gen without even temporarily destroying anything you've done before that. And the other half of the method is, of course, original. Another cool property of my method is that every single block that you make is always a 1x1x3 bar. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate this method with an example and show you how it works in detail. So up here should be a scramble and follow with white top green front and then rotate the cube so that this corner is at the back left like this. Okay, so the first step is from Briggs, it's CP line where you uh, permute the corners and then build a line here, this bar. Now, the thing is that the CP part is really difficult, so I'm not going to try to explain it. I'll leave links down in the description below, but for the sake of following it, you can do um, S, and then that makes this edge here, and then U prime R prime F, which are three magic moves for our purposes that solve the corner permutation. And if you want to skip this step and try this method on your own, you can just scramble your cube with R, U, and then M and E layer turns, and that will have this plus corner permutation solved. Remember that every time that you intentionally make a block as part of the method, you have to bandage it together. So let's instantly fuse these three pieces that we just solved into a bar like this. And now we can only physically do R, U, M, and E layer turns. Okay, so step two is now expanding this newly formed line into a Rue style first block. So we need three pieces that are all orange. Uh, the ones that belong are these two and this edge. So my strategy is to create this kind of line on the right side first. So we can do something like R and then uh, wide U prime because that's a combination of U and E slice turns like that and then move this edge down so that you can join the other two pieces together into this kind of line. 
and now remember that also gets instantly fused together and then um, you can insert it with uh, an R prime to make sure that these two colors here are opposite and then wide U2 and then that solves your first block and again that gets bandaged together like this now you can only physically do R, U, and M layer turns. Time for step three, EO strike. So I'm going to assume that you're already familiar with EO from RU and or it's ZZ. So I'm not gonna show you how to solve EO, but the way that it works here is a bit different. So uh, let's first orient the centers like you would in RU. So like the U center should be on U or D or something like that. You can do an M prime or you could even do a wide R that does the same thing. And then you can look for bad edges. So there are three here and then four, five, six bad edges. So one way to deal with four bad edges, like three here, making this like weird knot arrow thing and then one here is to do something like um, wide R and then that moves to F center up. So whatever quarter turn you move is going to change the orientation of all of these four centers here. So let's do an R prime and then move it back. And then you've just oriented four uh, edges. And there are two that remain here. So the way that you can deal with two uh, bad edges with this kind of bandage in your way is to move one of them to like the um, M slice and then do something like wide R. And then you can see here that there are three good edges and then one bad edge you can do uh, U to turn them into three bad, one good, and then replace that good edge with the other bad edge that was there at the bottom, like this. And then uh, U prime to orient all four of these and then move the F center uh, back. You could also just do a wide R2. It doesn't really matter which direction. Uh, but like in practice, you would choose the direction of these moves to influence your stripe. So now let's get into the stripe. So um, we need to look for the white, blue, and white, green edges that belong in DF, DB. So here they are. I'm going to do something like R prime, U prime, R, and then that forms our stripe. And again, I'm going to bandage that together. And then you can insert that with U prime, wide, R2. And then now, uh, we have this whole thing that should get bandaged together, like this. And so now, the only moves that you can do are R and U moves now. Step four, CO belt. So by the end of the step, you want your cube to look something like this, where all the corners are oriented, and you also have a solved belt, which is basically this bar here, which is like the FR and the BR edges that are connected here. And they might be swapped with each other. It doesn't really matter. Um, so the first step that I always do is form what's called a pseudo, uh, pseudo square. So this is basically a formation like this, uh, which is one of the belt edges in the DR position, which is then like fused together with the R center. So that's a bandage. And then you also extend that to a square with a pseudo pair, which is uh, the other belt edge attached to a corner that's any random corner that's also oriented. So that is a pseudo square. Let's make one. So on our cube, uh, we already have one belt edge attached to the R center, so we can just bandage it. And then we need to find the other belt edge oh, over here. And it's already attached to a corner that's oriented so it's basically like a think of it like a fake f2l pair and then this is a cross edge so then you can just insert that to make this block the pseudo uh, square at the front and no this isn't fused together because the pieces aren't even matching then we need to make sure that the corner that is next to the pseudo square so here's a pseudo square and the corner we're talking about needs to have its back or front color match the U or the D centers. So in this case, we already have what we want. It matches the U center. So we've skipped a step. Um, but normally, you might have something like this. If you solve the pseudo square to the back, 
you don't have the U or D color on the front. So what you have to do is an R and then you can insert an oriented corner to the front right and then uh, move it back down. And then now that we've solved it to the front, we need to do an algorithm from the back uh, to orient all these corners. So in this case, it is U prime like that. So now we're basically solved this state and we have formed a belt as well. So I'm going to bandage this together. And now the only thing that you can physically do is R2 and U moves. Step five is five bar. So you need to make two pairs first. So it can't be any, any two pairs, like we already have these two pairs here. They need to follow certain rules. So for example, if I just have like a, a solved cube, I'm going to tell you like which pairs of pieces you're allowed to solve. Like these, 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 these or these. These are your options for your two pairs uh, because they all have their long side uh, match either the L or the R centers. So this is suitable, but this is not. The second rule is that the two pairs that you choose need to be in opposite directions. So what I call a direction of a pair is if you imagine there is an arrow on the top or the bottom uh, sticker of an edge, and then the corner that it's joined to, you draw like an arrow to, the direction that arrow is pointing needs to be different for each pair. So for example, this is a counterclockwise pair. And if we look back on our cube, uh, this pair at the top here is a clockwise pair. Uh, the one at the bottom is always also a clockwise pair. And these two need to be different directions. So this is not what we want. Um, so first I'm just going to um, choose to keep this first, um, first pair uh, because I can see the future and then disregard the second pair. We need to find a different one. Uh, but normally you have to first make your first pair intuitively with R2 and U moves. So the second pair, uh, one that is uh, suitable is, let me see, uh, these two. So if you imagine this edge, like the edge, the side color needs to match L or R center, in this case, this one. Um, and it needs to be, since the first pair was clockwise, this one needs to be counterclockwise. So the corner that goes here is this corner. So what I'm going to do is join them by moving this corner here and then moving it down. And basically you have two choices to where this is going to end up. You either move it here or there. Um, I'm going to move it here because you want the front or the back sticker of this corner to uh, be that L or R uh, colored sticker because if you don't then you can't join the pair together let me show you what I mean like you'll get something misaligned like that so instead you have to move it here um, so that it's at the front and then do R2 to hide it and then U2 and then R2 to join them now sometimes during this process the first pair that you made is going to get in the way and this is kind of a puzzle that you have to figure out but sometimes a useful trick is to have the second pair corner be with the first pair like this together and then you put them uh, down so that uh, there's less bandaging or something like that. You'll figure it out. Um, so yeah, the second pair has been made and I'm going to bandage it together. Uh, now that you've reached the state, I have created a special bandaged graph that shows you all the possible ways that you can turn without the cube stopping you from doing so. And this way that you can keep track of the shape of the cube and we can do some useful things with it. So firstly, we have like this kind of standard position for these two pairs to be in. Um, it's called the home bandage. So what we'll do is move there. So we'll do something like U2, R2, U prime, R2, U. And this is the home position. Basically these two pairs are facing the left and they're like apart from each other like that. So the next step is to correct the corner orbit. It just means that we want the corners that extend these pairs into bars 
we want those corners to be an R2 away from solved. So you can see that the corner that extends this into a full bar is this corner. And it's in this diagonal orbit. That's all it does. It should do R2s. Uh, so we want to correct the orbits so that they're in any of these positions so that it can be an R2 away from solved. Um, this happens 50% of the time, and you just need to follow this orange graph loop that goes from the, or the home position and then all the way back. You can choose whichever direction you want. Let's go counterclockwise here. So I'll do a U prime and then R2, U, R2, U, R2, U, R2, U prime. So now I can see that we are an R2 away from expanding both of these pairs into bars. But before we do that, we want to make sure that we also create this vertical bar here. So you have these two corners and the edge that belongs in between is the white red one. So that's there. So it's stuck at the bottom and we want it to be on the top, either here or in this case, because we can't move this directly to the top in like the bandages that we have. So we first need to like um, move it like with an R2 here, and then uh, do an intuitive um, edge swap to move it here first. So what we'll do is uh, something like U, and then R2, U2, R2, U2, R2, U2. Um, and then if we go back to the home position, you can see that that edge is now stuck in between the two pairs. And that's good because if you do an R2 to move those um, corners back to where they were, you can now do another intuitive swap to swap these two edges so that this um, yellow red belongs here. So something like um, U prime and then R2, U2, R2, U2, R2, U2. And if we go back to the standard position, we can see that this bar has been formed and now we can bandage it together like um, like this. So now something's going to happen if we do an R2. That forms these new bars. And then you can do a U or U prime to align all the bars together. And then the cube will solve itself with R2 and U2 moves. In this case, we got lucky. Now I'm going to show you some interesting optimizations that you can do with this method to save some moves. So the first thing you can do for every single solve is to combine the move to home position and fix corner orbit steps. So I'm going to join them into one line and oftentimes you'll notice that you can cancel a lot of moves. So just looking at this, we can cancel eight moves and then we can cancel one more by turning these into a single U prime and bam, we just saved nine moves. And the reason why this works is more clear when you look at the graph. So here is this yellow path that we took from one bandage state and then we went home, right? Now, if we compare that with the path that we take immediately afterwards, which is like once we go home, then we go back and then go around this orange orbit fixing path. So we can simplify this into a new path that looks like that. And if we read out the notation, this is U prime because we're going like opposite the arrow. So U prime R2 U R2 U prime. That's the exact same thing that we got when we canceled the notation. Now, because of the strict bandaging of the cube, it takes a lot of moves to complete the vertical bar on the top. But if we allow ourselves to temporarily break what we've previously made, then it's possible to save even more moves in this case. So instead of doing this like um, intuitive edge swap spam, you can replace it with this neat little SR2 gen commutator. So if you watch this, it does the exact same thing. And then you can insert the bar and in our case, we get to cancel even more moves. And so now we end up with a 50 STM move count, which is 25 moves saved over the original. The last optimization I have is for the last step. So my method reduces the entire cube into these 12 states that are arranged in like this ring. 
So if you land on one of these states, there are two ways to get to solved, the short way and the long way. If you start with a U2, like that, then you'd go the short way. And if you start with an R2, you go the long way. So you can either use your intuition or use this graph to cheat to determine which way to go around the circle so you can save moves. Uh, the exception is this one over here, which is six moves regardless of the direction you take. In summary, Rubar is a new theory-based solving method that combines bandage reduction with moveset reduction by making bars everywhere. Any progress that you make will never be broken in future steps. It's intuitive and has only eight algs excluding mirrors. When you bandage pieces together, some amazing structures emerge from the cube, and you can do cool stuff with them to solve the cube more optimally. I hope you enjoyed.